What main character didn't deserve a happy ending? That guy Peter from Divergent. He erased his memory and therefore was forgiven for all of the things he committed before. This is done so much better in a Stargate episode. Horrific mass murderer screws up killing a planet with a disease, gets infected herself and loses her memories. She then spends her time helping people on the planet and is horrified to learn what she has done before this. All Betty's stories have happy endings. That's because she knows where to stop. She's realized the real problem with stories. If you keep them going long enough, they always end in death. Neil Gaiman. I think about this particular passage of Sandman a lot. It was such a small part, but so powerful. I'm glad someone else thinks about it, too. Jerry from Tom and Jerry. That mouse was literally torturing an innocent cat because he felt entitled to food he didn't own. Tom was just doing his job and protecting the food and property of his owner who happened to be a large black woman that would regularly beat the crap out of Tom because of the crap Jerry pulled and Tom got blamed for. Man, kid me realized that the first time I watched an episode where Jerry just straight up antagonizes Tom. Like, not stealing food, or something Tom's obligated to react to. There are episodes where Jerry just pulls an itchy scratchy, walks out of his hole and drops something on a sleeping Tom. Bebop Mouse. Paris Orlando Bloom in Troy. He got his whole family, city, and soldiers on the other side killed because he stole another man's wife. I am a big fan of love, but this guy was the worst. To be fair, in the original myths of the Trojan War, the humans don't really have a choice in what happens. The Malfoys, specifically Lucius and Narcissa, they facilitated the return of Magic Hitler and he lived in their house. Tons of deaths are on their hands, and lest we forget Lucius tried to kill Ginny with the diary in book 2 for shoots and giggles. They both should have gone to Azkaban for life. Basically the entire cast of Chicago, minus Amos Hart, Roxy's husband, and the Hungarian prisoner, are not guilty. Frick everyone else. Goldilocks, broke into a house, stole food, broke chairs, messed up beds then ran off, what a bee. Also, Jack, as of Beanstalk, nasty little sucker. In the original story the bears mauled Goldilocks. Lady Elaine Fair killed, from Mr. Rogers neighborhood. She was always rude and scared the crap out of me as a child. Much preferred meow meow kitty, didn't care for that freaking owl either. Henrietta Pussycat. The dinosaurs at the end of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. That well movie is a mess and that ending was just horrible. I thought they were actually gonna let the dinosaurs die and I thought ha, huh, that's a pretty mature and thoughtful ending for the movie. Then the little clone girl had to press the big red button and set them free into the continental US because they were clones. Just like her. What a disaster. I would have loved that ending. Would have been full circle. They saved them from gas on the island but ultimately the dinosaurs couldn't evade the death the universe had for them, linking back to the chaos theory and life finds a way from the first film. Then when that little was like they're like me I audibly sighed. I love these movies for the dinosaurs, but that plot was so weak. Jax Teller from Sons of Anarchy, he got to go out on his own terms and never had to square with his kids and be a real father. This whole time. He'd done all of this stuff for his kids, then abandoned them to fulfill his Jesus complex. Juice and OP deserve better. Scott Pilgrim. He cheats on his girlfriend, forgets almost everyone he meets, and doesn't change his act until he literally dies and goes to purgatory. He's in butthole, so is Ramona. The entire plot is based around him being in butt and Ramona being one too. They're buttholes to each other, to other people yet they don't realize it. Eventually they realize it and they get together and want to improve who they are together. We don't see Scott and Ramona's redemption. Instead we see the events which led them to realize they need to change. Ted Mosby. His approach to love and women was crappy. He needed some actual deep self-discovery not a constant search for a woman to complete him. Classic Schmosby. Acha Hasasuk. Dude was a dong. Worse. He tried to kill everyone who loved him and they for some reason still love him to the point where a girl he tried to kill, married him. Dude tried to destroy his village and now he is welcomed back to the same village. WTF. 
Naruto, remember when Kakashi and you said that people who abandon comrades are worse and scum? I love that people are trying to justify Sasuke's history with. He had a fricked up childhood. He sought to save the world. He couldn't be contained anyway. He didn't abandon his friends because they didn't really need him at the time. Everyone else also got second chances. Sorry, those aren't good enough. Honestly like half of the characters that made it to the end of Naruto had absolutely no business being there. Really the tragic backstory meme seemed bad enough at the time but I'd trade that any day for the obsession Naruto developed later on with giving its villains a redemption arc. Itoshi's reveal was great but a major red flag for what was to come. Like what happened with Sasuke though he isn't even the most egregious example. Remember Orochimaru, the big bad of the first half of the season? The guy who has committed the most horrific crimes against humanity ever seen in that entire universe, which is really saying a lot, yet yeah, turns out he was a good boy all along. Dang near flipped the table after I finished that part. I got a lot of responses in regards to my opinion on Orochimaru, so I'm just gonna put my response here. I was being a tad facetious when I said he was a good boy all along, but there's no denying he 100% got away with everything he did. The Joseph Mengel of the Naruto world is back to doing exactly what he was before as a villain but now with a government sanction. The presence of guards is honestly irrelevant, because if Orochimaru decided to kill them and escape the only question would be whether the guards would actually get a chance to defend themselves, not whether they could actually stop him. The only thing keeping Orochimaru in line is the presence of Naruto and Sasuke who are more powerful than him. But at the same time the nature of Orochimaru's abilities mean he is perfectly capable of simply waiting for them to die of old age or whatever before returning to being the world's most wanted man. But why would he? Again he has everything he ever wanted now. Freedom to perform whatever horrific human experiments pop into his head, with the express permission of the world governments on top. Beyond that though there's the fact that he's downright chummy with various characters he previously tried to kill and majorly fricked with. He's in Naruto and Hinata's wedding video for Christ's sake. Rachel Berry. She was supposed to be the outcast we were to feel sympathetic towards. But in reality she was just a manipulative, self-involved narcissist who couldn't bear to allow anyone else find any sort of satisfaction in their lives. Every problem she encountered was supposed to be this massive obstacle we were supposed to cheer her through. But she was the freaking engineer of all of those problems. She's an insufferable C to everyone in the show with whom she has a relationship. She deserved none of the happiness she ended up having at the end. I really do think that had Cory not passed away, the show would have ended completely different. I'd put money on Finn and Rachel getting back together. All in all though, Glee should have followed this formula. First three seasons are of the OG Glee members, then when the new ones get ushered in, the story follows them for a while. Then maybe the last few parts of the final season we could get a few reuniting episodes. I was over the OG characters by the beginning of the final season. I really didn't enjoy the NYC arc like I thought I would. Even Mercedes who I really enjoyed early on and longer than the others I grew tired of. I think Santana is the only one who really deserved the ending she got. There was a lot of character development for her through the whole show. Sierra Burgess from Sierra Burgess is a loser, a recent teen romcom on Netflix. Spoilers. We are supposed to root for her because she's the poor girl that's a little on the frumpy side but has a great personality deep down. But she is an absolute crap bag the entire movie. She catfishes this poor dude who thinks he's sharing these deep special moments with Veronica the hot cheerleader who experiences positive character growth throughout the movie. If anything she deserved the hot guy. She pretends to be deaf when she has a random encounter with the hot dude so he won't recognize her voice. Horrible. She embarrasses the crap out of Veronica in front of the whole football game just because she saw the hot guy kiss Veronica which is the girl he freaking thought he was dating so of course he would kiss her. And don't even get me started on the scene where hot guy is forced to kiss Sierra when he thinks it's Veronica he is kissing. Disgusting. Absolutely none of this crap would fly if it was a dude pulling all of these stunts. No matter how many insecurities he had. And yet somehow she gets the guy at the end. Does he have no self respect? Absolutely agree. To be fair, while not my cup of tea, with half an hour of the film left it had potential to actually be decent. Have her end up making up with her friend, even that other girl maybe, and have the guy not end up with either girl as they were both complicit. Could have been a good example of going against genre tropes. 
Sending a message of crap that happens in romcoms doesn't fly. The dude in Ruby Sparks. He controlled that girl's life, made her do things against her will and lost her. Then at the end of the movie he gets another chance with her completely undeserved. I hated this movie with a passion. Why did he get a chance with that girl who looked like her? It went against the whole message of the movie which until that point I'd assumed was that you can't be with a manic pixie dream girl. They don't really exist because women are people too. It's not a cute movie at all. Ugh. The lawyer played by Jamie Foxx in Law Abiding Citizen. The script should have allowed Clyde to win, but in the end he didn't, and Jamie Foxx's character learned nothing from the whole ordeal. The movie is practically set up for the audience to root for the main character, even though he technically is evil. Norman in my opinion Clyde did win he made Jamie Foxx break the rules to beat him. Nancy Botwin from Weeds. The entire series is this story of her increasingly bad decisions, outing herself and family in ever increasing peril. I love that show, but man does she make poor decisions. First season Nancy, okay you are in way over your head since your husband died and started dealing to try and maintain a lifestyle you clearly can't afford. Second season Nancy, you are so freaking lucky you aren't dead or in jail. Your actions and decisions had irreparably harmed people around you. Why the frick are you still doing this? Third season and beyond Nancy, you freaking selfish frick stick. The only reason you and your family aren't dead is because of a myriad of miracles that have been undeservingly bestowed upon you. I wish you nothing but unhappiness, and your family would be better off if you were dead. Jim Carrey and Liar Liar. Crappy father, crappy person. Yet he beats out a good man who truly loves Myra Tierney and the Buttholes Kid. Yeah but the other guy is crap at doing the claw, so Yano. Anne Hathaway's boyfriend in The Devil Wears Prada. All he does is beggar her for working hard to achieve her goals. He's pretty much a dong to her the entire movie. How dare her work hard towards the career she wants. The scene in the restaurant where she gives them all super nice freebies then they play keep away with her phone as her boss is calling her always pisses me off. But she's nothing but nice to her group of friends and they all mock her for her situation. Felicity from Arrow. Tumblr and Twitter self insert queen survives bullet wounds to spine. Becomes the most insufferable. Quality degrading character that reduces a comic book show to murder its canon love interest twice and make it a soap opera. Nukes an entire city and gets off scot-free, even when they introduce a character from it. The Flash and Iris finally have their wedding. And after ruining the reception by screaming at Oliver she doesn't want to marry him, she interrupts Flash and Iris at the wedding vows to ask if she can marry Oliver. But no one calls her out. Girl is literally Steve Urkel 2.0. Remember when Felicity only showed up once in a while and was quirky and funny? Yeah, that was great. I'm glad Emily Bet Rickards gets more screen time and exposure in her field of work but the show could have worked so much better if Felicity was more of a downplayed Cisco. I stopped watching the show after season 4 and I don't think I want to bother with more. I know part of the charm of F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby is that the characters represent the worst of human nature at that time in history. However, while Daisy was punished by living with the guilt of killing Gatsby, she still had her marriage, status, children, freedom, finances. She will be able to go on and live her life the same as before. Wolf of Wall Street's Jordan Belfort is based on a real person of the same name. Who despite some heinous crimes, is raking in money from the movie detailing the shady things he did in his career. The real Jordan is going to be okay personally and financially, but what about every family he scammed along the way? Don Draper. Pretty much any character from Mad Men. Really, it was a show about horrible people. You could never feel bad for the people who were being wronged because they were wronging other people in turn. He doesn't get a happy ending, though, or at least, the way I saw it is he was just going to go back to work with nothing changed about him, and keep on his bad habits and makes no improvement. I wouldn't really call that a happy ending. Rory Gilmer. Even before the recent revival show she was the worst. Oh I was raised by a single mom, who is magically financially secure unlike actual single teen moms, so I can't possibly be insanely privileged. Sure my rich grandparents buy me whatever I want but it's those other rich kids who are really out of touch. 
Also I'm just so iru special that I can work for any newspaper I want even though print media is dying. Instead of marrying the love of my life I should just leave him because the media outlets in his area are not fancy enough for extra special me to work for. I'm glad Paris got her redemption arc. She was just about as privileged as Rory, but she owned up to it and was a hard worker, and had to live seeing Rory act like her life was so difficult, and that it made her entitled to all the same things that Paris worked hard towards. She was a beat to Rory in the beginning, but seeing how Rory carried herself throughout the rest of the series, she probably deserved it. Dennis from It's Always Sunny He's a psychopath that ruins other people's lives for enjoyment, but he is also my favorite character from anything ever. Everyone in that show is a terrible person. As much as I love hate her, Lucy Ricardo from I Love Lucy, always getting her way, selfish, childish amongst other things, I can say the same for Michelle from Full House, actually the whole cast except for Uncle Jesse. Sarah from the first Land Before Time movie. She was a dong to little foot like the entire time but still made it to the great valley. Where's sharp tooth when you need him? But she's just a child. As a kid I thought she was a dong, but she changed at the end. It also showed how kind little foot is because he kept trying to help her. Main character from Ready Player One. Spoilers. Especially in the book version. He's a creepy stalker Nisegua who gets the girl by bombarding her with unrequested gifts and continuing to be an incredibly creepy stalker throughout the story. Before the girl's even introduced he spends at least a full chapter dedicated to how much he's obsessed with this person. Anakin Skywalker. Maybe becoming an immortal force ghost was okay back in 1983, but now we know he murdered a bunch of children and indigenous people of Tatooine, not just the men. This was so close to being the first 2018 reddit comment mentioning the prequels without being a prequel meme. How has no one mentioned Mary Crawley or Downton Abbey yet? She was, ghastly, a total snake to both her sisters, and only threw them a bone when they might somehow tarnish a good reputation. Likewise, she was horribly overdramatic. She seemed to enjoy making dinner uncomfortable. She only did good things when it was obvious she'd gone way, way too far in her sadistic game. And she expected to be redeemed, even though it was her fault to begin with. I never understood why she was the focus of the show, and I never understood why her suitors liked her. She was terrible to them too. And in contrast, the nicest character, Sybil, had the worst ending. Claire in Jurassic World. She was an awful character with no redeeming quality whatsoever. She's an awfully written character, like a sloppy mashup of a Mary Sue and other tropes and or cliches. But as much as she deserves some criticism, she somehow gets criticism that isn't due. Specifically I'm thinking of how she is criticized for working instead of running around the park with her nephews. With all the bulls in these movies, the one thing people want to challenge is how young professionals working their way up the corporate ladder have to work excessive amounts of overtime? Are you crapping me? I hated Judy Greer's character way more. That freaking phone call to Claire made me want to throw something at the screen. Wah, I'm getting a divorce. Babas it my kids. Frick me. P.S. I like Judy Greer, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Chris Pratt but they just have to use the script they were given. Chris Pratt's character in Passengers, he essentially stole the girl's entire future out of selfishness. I saw a video once that said his character would have made an amazing villain if the story was told from Jennifer Lawrence's perspective. It would start with her waking up alone on the ship and coming across some guy who claims that the same thing happened to him and that he doesn't know what happened. Cue the romantic build up of her getting close to Pratt, who may be charming but might seem slightly off to the audience. Then the ball drops and she finds out that this man who she'd been bonding with the whole time actually trapped her there to suffer with him. Stealing her whole life from her. It'd be pretty impactful and make an iffy sci-fi romance movie into a genuinely good suspense thriller. Ever since I watched it I couldn't help but wish I could see the movie made like that. Gaius Balter. Gaius fracking Balter. Well, I didn't like him, but I did really like what Apollo had to say during his trial about how they were going to acquit the crimes of everyone who had some questionable things at a certain point, but not Balter because, well, we don't like you very much, that's real justice right there, 
Sticking by edicts you've made and not trying to pick favorites. Treating everyone equally even if you don't like them. Angela from The Office. She spends the series in a will they won't they secret relationship with Dwight. Even though she gets engaged to Andy and marries someone else. She spends entire seasons cheating on her public lover and has the audacity to lose her crap when she finds out the senator is cheating on her. And while I'm thinking about it Dwight acting all heartbroken that Angela was sleeping with Andy while she was engaged to him was pathetic and awful with Andy even pointing that out. She also lied to Dwight repeatedly about Philip. I don't care what she says her reason was. She should have known Dwight would want to marry her because he loves her, not because he thinks Philip is his son. That should have been freaking obvious given how he was all over her for 3 stroke 4 of the series and long before anyone had started having kids. From the sprinkles incident to the end of the series she stunned offish and cold toward Dwight until she loses everything when she gets a taste of her own medicine from the senator and starts living in Oscar's closet. And then she has the epiphany that she loves Dwight. I could have believed that in the early seasons. But after spending a better part of the series pushing him away while simultaneously using him as a tool to cheat on whoever she's dating with. Frick no. She knows Dwight has an enormous estate and a sizable amount of money. And we all know he's extremely gullible because he believes everything Michael and Jim tell him. And Angela used that to her advantage. Maybe she does still have some feelings for him. But if it were love that motivated her, they would have been married long before the final episode. For as devout as she is. It's ironically hilarious how unfaithful she is to everyone she dates. Any episode with the party planning committee is yet another perfect example of how Angela treats everyone around her. Let me quote Pam for a second here. I'm the office administrator now, which means I'm basically being paid to be head of the party planning committee. The first thing I did was head. I shut it down. At its worst, it was a toxic political club used to make others feel miserable and left out. At its best it planned parties. The source of all of the toxicity was from Angela. She used it to power trip over the other women in the office and, like Pam said, make others feel miserable and left out. Not to mention she's horrible to everyone else throughout the series. She never changes her attitude or grows as a character. She's just mean. She hates everyone around her unless she wants something from them. No matter how much. For example, Pam would try to reach out when she saw something wrong. Angela was judgmental, petty, and downright rude toward her except for when she had problems and wanted someone to vent to. TL. DR. Angela was a crappy and unfaithful person and lover who doesn't deserve white and scarcely had a single pleasant interaction with anyone in the office throughout the course of 9 whole seasons. At best, she tolerated her co-workers for short periods of time and at worst she would spit venom and vitriol. I love Angela. I'm willing to overlook almost everything she does because I love her character but I still can't get over the fact that Dwight didn't get to enjoy 2-3 years of his child's life. Like nobody ever mentions this but Dwight didn't get to actively meet and interact with his child till he was at least 1 year old. And he wanted children. A large of the series is him being upset about not having children and then when he does have one he doesn't even figure it out till the kid can walk. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.